1927 Duesenberg Model X. Looks like a gangster car because it's got the low roof line and it's quite stylish for the period. It's just a wonderful old girl. The Duesenberg brothers, Fred and Augie, were independent car builders. They were really race car guys, but they built cars to support their racing habit. The nice thing about this car, it's all original and unrestored. A man named Howard Johnson bought this car in 1945. He put it in his garage. He locked the garage. There was an earthquake. The garage shifted so he couldn't get the door open. And the car stayed in there till 2005 when I pulled it out. In fact, his daughter, who grew up in the house, had never even seen the car because she'd never been in the garage. He, he was a pretty, pretty secretive guy. A lot, of, a lot of us old car guys are pretty strange. We redid the engine, obviously, and we did the brakes for safety. But everything else is exactly as it was in 1927. Maybe you're wondering why I didn't fix all the dings, dents, and scratches on this incredibly rare vehicle. Well, up to fairly recently, old unrestored cars. I got it for free. It was abandoned in Palm Desert for six years. Didn't have as much value as perfectly restored cars. They never looked that good in 1962. No, they didn't. That <laughs> no. Time. Yeah, this is perfect. But these days, many cars are looked upon as antiques. This morning, I was just putting a cloth over it, and a piece of paint came off. You wouldn't take an old Chippendale dresser and refinish it. It would lose its value. And that's the thinking that goes into keeping these cars original. The man I bought it from was almost 90 years old, and his aunt actually gave it to him when he was 10, which I think was pretty exemplary for a car. That's what this episode is all about, original and unrestored. The next guy you're about to meet is almost as famous for his Porsches as he is for being a comedian. And he is fanatical about original. You'll see what I'm talking about. Here we have three classic Porsches from the 50s. And these cars are original and unrestored. And if you're a true collector, that is the most important thing. Let's meet the owner of these cars. Jerry, how are you, buddy? Hi, Jay. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on the show, well, boy. Love to give young comics a new break. As you all know, Jerry Seinfeld, a great stand-up comedian and star of the show Seinfeld. Plus, he's a real car guy and host of the very funny web show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Do people say that to you all the time? Is this a bit? Are you doing are you, a bit? You go, no, I'm talking. I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> what you might not know is we've been friends for over 30 years. That's a lot of cars and a lot of hairstyles. Now, what do we have here? Well, we have a 56 European, we have a 59 Carrera, and a 58 Speedster. Pretty much the model line of the late 50s right. from the top to the cheapest. These three unrestored cars are some of Porsche's earliest models and started Porsche's reign as one of the best sports car makers in the world. Ferdinand Porsche was a genius. He made everything from racing cars to tanks. But the 356 was their first production car. Over 75,000 were built between the late 1940s and the early 1960s. And those that survived are loved and treasured. People do see this car when I drive it, and they see, like, you know, if you look here, you see the paint is kind of cracking a little bit. Right. And, uh, you know, here it's uh, a little deteriorated. And they go, when are you going to restore it? And they don't seem to see that there's value in a car that's just hung around as it was. Right. Like, for example, you, yes. you know, are original and unrestored, that's right? That's right. I've been wearing these clothes <laughs> since you've known me. That's what keeps your value. <laughs> exactly. If there was such a thing as a Porsche supercar in the 50s, this would have been it. The guy who spec'd it in 59, he got a speedster seat for the driver's side. He got RSK brakes and wheels. He has a special intake to cool the air into the car. Oh, I've never seen those. Look yeah, that. he was trying to make a light, high performance touring car. And the car was barely used. That's the other amazing thing about it. It's only got 13,000 miles. And experts say all those factors put the value of this car at well over a million dollars. And I got this because of you. The guy had it his whole life, and he didn't want it to right. become an auction football. So he calls Jay, and Jay called me. I don't know why. And, well, I knew if I had bought this car, Seinfeld <laughs> would never forgive me. He, no. he, he's the Porsche guy. I like Porsches. But I like other things too, like women and steak and yeah. things like that. No, but not you, me. you you just just Porsche. No. So I know if I bought I this sleep car, with Porsches, it would, I this eat would be Porsches. Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> you just 
pulling your hair. So I, I said, I said, I gotta call Jerry. And of course, you jumped on it right away. It is the greatest car I've ever found. Now tell us about this one, because this car was quite controversial. Yes, this is the controversial speedster. People thought, why would someone pay so much money for something that's gonna need a restoration? And my whole point was, it's perfect exactly as it is. Yeah. Engine's never been apart, and it still runs strong, and it's got 99,000 miles on it, so I'm gonna be the one that turns it over. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you get in a car like this, and you see how well-made it really was. So which of these three cars attracts your interest? This is the color of my brother's Speedster. When my brother got back from Vietnam, he bought a Speedster for $800. Wow. So let's take this one for a ride. This will bring back Great. some memories. Let's cool. do it. I love the GTC. Yeah. It's Action Jerry. I never wear sunglasses. I love your sunglasses, but you did it on my show. I can't stand sunglasses. Why, why not? Because I go, what does it look like now? No. I don't want to be fooled. What does it look like now? <laughs> it's not really green. What does it look like now? <laughs> what does it really look like? I'll get some I can't. I can't. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> it's OK, we're comedians. <laughs> we can run red lights, we're comedians. The only way you can be a comedian now, a young person, is you pour your guts out on stage yeah. of whatever your pain is, whatever your uh, trauma of life right. is. Or you could just be funny. <laughs> 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 I'm going to take a right up here at the end of this. It shifts very nicely. Oh, very it? smooth. There's not a rattle or a squeak in it? No, no. I'm going to show you the greatest road. You will now live on this road after. Wow. Long. Coming up, Jerry and I discuss the finer things in life. You know, this is a bit like uh, Cindy Crawford's mold. Excuse me? And Patrick Dempsey shows me what gives him his racing edge. You're so alive that you don't think about anything else. And then you go bang. Jerry Seinfeld's taking me out in his unrestored Porsche Speedster to show me why he loves it. The key to driving is having the right car on the right road on the right day and being in the right mood. You have right. four elements that make right. a great drive, and I think we've got all four today. Exactly. So when did you start actively collecting? The first old car I bought was a 58 Speedster, the same color as this one. Right. I bought it in 91. I was looking through Hemmings in your kitchen. Right. In the same house you're in now. Right. And I bought it because I thought it was pretty. I yeah. thought it was a great design, an interesting looking shape. If I only could have one sports car, it would be a Speedster. Steve McQueen drove one of these, James Dean raced yep. one. In the 50s, <laughs> this was the cheapest way to go racing and you could win. Whatever free time I have, I want to talk about cars, look yeah. at cars, drive cars, read yeah. about cars. Me too. And I don't bother with all the other <laughs> You know, yeah, there's yeah. so much <laughs> that I have no interest in. Right, right. That's what's fun about doing this show. I don't have to pretend to like the movie. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, you, you were fabulous. <laughs> oh, you were really good. <laughs> but what made you make the leap to all-in Porsche? Minimalism. This little car is the essence of sports car perfection to me. A graceful, aerodynamic, efficient, small car. There's no right. stupid lines on a Porsche that don't make sense, that are right. there for no reason. In the 50 thing, you realize all that Jim Crackery and the big fins and all that, they tried to say that the big fins stabilized the yeah. car. Yeah, all this kind of phony baloney. Because right. everybody wanted a jet plane, you know, because of World War II. Yeah. That was just what it was. It was yeah. just Jim Crackery. Now, when we did your show, you had that, uh, the was Gamond. that a, the Gamond, was that a 48, 1948? That was a 1948. That was the oldest original condition Porsche in the world. Wow. Which, and you can see it right now by typing in comedians in cars, getting coffee. Oh, there you go. We have to do that. Yeah. You can leave this program instantly. <laughs> 
it'll be another couple of decades and there'll be just pod modules moving around. Yeah. Cars will be like horses, they'll be luxury items. Yeah, you know there are more horses now than there were during the Civil War. You always know stuff like that. It's true. Is this the greatest road? The greatest. Look at this. Don't you think you're in Sicily now? Yeah, it's this. fantastic. You don't want to miss a turn here. No. Remember that joke you used to do about looking into the canyon? Pete California, go, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, look at the view in New York. Is go, you know, I can kill a guy here, man. You never get caught. <laughs> so be honest, do you get this car? Oh, yes, of course I this do. This is a great running little car. As you know, old cars that are still around are usually Mickey Mouse right. or they're badly restored. Nobody did anything to this. Yeah. You know, this is a bit like uh, Cindy Crawford's mold. Excuse me? It's beautiful, oh. but there's an imperfection in it that makes it desirable. It has overcome odds, like a comedian. Yes. You're never really going to make it, so why are you going no, to the show? No, it's not possible to be a comedian. Yeah, it's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's the same type of deal. It is very much that. You know? I do feel that. Well, Jerry, this is a perfect day. They have the perfect road, the perfect car, the perfect companion. And you threw in the word Jim Crackery, which I haven't heard since. Have you not heard Jim Crackery? I have not heard Jim Crackery oh, yeah, in quite yeah. some time. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what it is. It's good with Velveeta, by the way, Jim Crackery. Let's get this baby home. A day like today is exactly the reason you keep a classic the way it is. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.